Hi, my name is Melissa Coates and I'm a Solution Architect with Blue Granite. Today's video is a quick recap of what's new with Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Let's first set the stage briefly with a few data lake concepts. A data lake is a repository for storing large amounts of data. It is agnostic as to the type of data that it is storing. So you can think of it as a single architectural platform to house any type of data. The advantages of this are that it reduces our upfront effort to initially ingest that data because we are deferring the work to apply a schema to that data. So that gives us time to define, well, what is the value of this data and what do we want to do with this data downstream? So this allows us access to new file types, for instance, or to streaming and low latency type of data, which in turn facilitates new use cases and advanced analytic scenarios, all in a very cost efficient way. In Azure, we've had Azure Storage and Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 1 available for some time now. And the new introduction is Gen 2, which is a multimodal hybrid of the first two options that we have had. And in order to understand that, let's step back a moment and talk about the first two options. Azure Storage is a traditional object store, much like S3 on Amazon. So we have the notion of a storage account. Within the account, we have one or more containers. And within the container, we have files or blobs. Now, these blobs, this is considered flat storage. And if, in fact, we introduce folders, they are merely simulated for us users. In reality, they are just strings and not true folders. Conversely, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 1 is a hierarchical file-based storage system. So the folders are indeed first-class citizens. So previously, this has been an either-or decision. Do we implement Azure Storage or do we implement the Azure Data Lake Storage service? And so this was a tough decision because Azure Storage has had some very compelling features that as customers we want. However, if you are running an analytics workload, you'd naturally want to use the Data Lake Store. So the new offering is a multimodal offering which combines the features from both. Now, I'm going to show you a demo in a minute. There's not actually a separate menu item. It's not its own service in Azure. It's built upon Azure Storage with additional capabilities to enable what we call the hierarchical namespace that allows the hierarchical file system to work. The idea behind multimodal storage is that we are storing the data once and accessing it through one of two endpoints depending on what it is that we want to do. So we have an object store endpoint. This is the same WASB driver that we have had for years now that will still continue to work. And we have a new endpoint called the file system endpoint, and it uses a new Azure Blob File System or ABFS driver in order to access the data in a different way. Let me illustrate what I mean by that with three examples. The first example is, let's say you've got a data ingestion process that has been running and you have no desire to rewrite it, and that is fine to leave it in place as is. Let's say you have a new data process that you want to introduce. So you could have that process turn around and use the new file system endpoint. So you could end up using both in conjunction with each other. The second example, let's say we have some data ingestion occurring and it's going to say a temp folder. In this case, we definitely want to use the new file system endpoint when we process that data and partition it out to the year and month and date oriented folder structure that we've defined for it. In an object store, if we had say 10,000 files, this would be 10,000 deletes and 10,000 moves. Whereas in a hierarchical file system, this is a metadata only operation. And the third example, let's say you are running some user queries and let's say we want to pull the records from month 01. When we are utilizing the hierarchical file system endpoint, we can leverage partition pruning and improve query performance because then the compute engine, such as Databricks, for instance, knows how to navigate 
that folder structure and only pull back the relevant data. Let me show you what this looks like in the Azure portal. So I'm in the storage accounts menu. I'm going to click add and let's give this storage account a name. Let's pick a supported location currently in the public preview. The account kind needs to be a V2 general purpose. And if I go to the advanced page, this is the important part. What I need to do to enable Gen 2 or enable that hierarchical namespace is select it here at the storage account level when the account is provisioned. Let's look at this existing storage account. So if I go to the configuration menu item, we can see that the Gen 2 preview has indeed been enabled for this account. So if I go back and I look at blobs, and I'm going to choose this container called ATM machine data. Once we are within this area, it now has the same look and feel that Azure Data Lake Store Gen 1 had. If I select this first file, the overview page shows us a few properties about the file. I see the access tier is hot and that's inherited from the default at the storage account level. That can be changed for each individual file based on it going through the lifecycle management process. And we have key value pairs. So we can assign metadata like this at the container level and or the individual file level. And that's pretty cool. That gives us another way to track metadata about our data, which is very cool. If I click on the edit blob page, you can see here that I could go ahead and if I have the permissions, I can change the data right here. However, if you don't want that, let me show you how you can block that. If we return to the container level, and if I look at the access policy for this particular container, you can see I can add a policy for immutable blob storage. So let's say I want to set a time-based retention to say the data in this container cannot change for 365 days. So in that case, if I were to return over to that page we were just at and I tried to change it, even if I have permissions, this policy will overwrite that and I will receive an error because the immutable policy has been set. So to recap, Gen 2 is based on Azure Storage. We have the same object store drivers and access points that we have had in the past. The new pieces that are introduced are the file system endpoint and a hierarchical namespace, which allows us to unify the data lake story on Azure and no longer makes it an either or decision point. And this allows us to take advantage of the best of both feature sets between the object storage and the hierarchical storage. In terms of support for compute services, the file system endpoint is currently supported by HT Insight, Databricks, and Azure Data Factory. So if you're looking at the Microsoft documentation, you will see tutorials for those particular services. USQL with Azure Data Lake Analytics continues to be supported through the object store endpoint. Now you might be wondering, once this comes out of public preview, should enabling the hierarchical namespace be the default for all of your new storage accounts. And at this point, the guidance is to not enable it for the classic object store use cases or general purpose file storage. So essentially, if you are never going to use the new endpoint, then you would not want to enable it because if the hierarchical namespace is enabled, the transaction cost is approximately 30% extra on every transaction if it's enabled at the storage account level. So in terms of the current state, Azure Storage, not going anywhere. Data Lake Storage Gen 1, fully supported, not going anywhere at this time. Gen 2, we are still in preview and support for the features including some of what I discussed earlier in this video is absolutely still evolving. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.